Good evening and welcome to the May 7th uh, Board of Trustees meeting here in the Village of Monroe. If I could all ask you to stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for attending. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes. First, the organizational minutes of April 1st. I need a motion. I'll make the motion. I need a second. Any discussion? Aye. Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Thank you. Our approval of the minutes for the April 2nd meeting. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. I need a second. I'll second. Any discussion on that? Call the question. Aye. All right, so Carrie, thank you. Uh, April 11th, public hearing. Uh, one moment, I want to check something. Okay, our uh, April 11th, public hearing. I uh, need a motion to accept the minutes. I need a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Aye. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. April 16th, special meeting. Excuse me. Am I? April 16th was the second of the regular board meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then the special meeting on the 29th. Right. Okay. Okay. So the April 16th meeting, I need a motion to accept the minutes there. I'll make the motion. A second. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. Aye. That's staying I was making, yeah. Aye. Thank you. Aye. So carried. Uh, <coughs> special meeting April 29th. I need a motion to accept the minutes of April 29th. I'll make a motion. I need a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. And then the special meeting on April 30th. I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes on the special meeting on April 30th. A second. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, yeah, I'm wondering why it says conflict for me. Uh, yeah, but I don't think there's a conflict for me. April 30th. Which meeting? April 30th meeting. Um, the far one up in the foothills. Oh yes. Like house of budget. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Yep. And you weren't here. No. Public hearing. I wasn't, I, then I wasn't here for that one. Okay. All right, so we have a first and a second? We, we do. We have a first. We have a second? I'll second. We already, have Call a question. we already had a first and a okay. second. Okay, very good. Call the question. Aye. Aye. Same. Aye. Aye, so carried. Okay, next order of business, budget transfers and modifications. Have the trustees had an opportunity to read through them? Mm-hmm. Any questions? I need a motion to accept the transfers as written and the modifications. We have a first, a second. I'll second. Call the question. Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Aye. So carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next order of business: completion of probationary period. Yep. Trustee Hull. Yep. In a memo from Chief Melchiori, um, he's notified us that the following officers have completed their required probationary term. Uh, Daniel Lindell, police officer effective April 18th, 2019. Richard Haley, dispatcher effective March 29th, 2019. And Alexandra Travato, part-time dispatcher effective April 23rd, 2019. 
Uh, the required MSD 426-B will be submitted to the Orange County Department of Human Resources. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Call a question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Thank you. Uh, next order of business is the uh, Brian Pinella part-time parking enforcement officer, Trustee Hall. Mm -hmm. And another memo from Chief Melchiori. He writes asking that the Board of Trustees accept his recommendation um, to appoint Brian Pinella to the position of part-time parking enforcement officer effective May 8, 2019 at an hourly, salary, <laughs> an hourly salary of $20 per hour. He's currently a part-time dispatcher with the town of Warwick. Uh, and has undergone the required department background investigation, physical, and drug screen. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. I second. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Congratulations, Ryan. Welcome aboard, aboard Mr. Pinella. <laughs> Next order of business, uh, Trustee Hall. Yes. And another memo from Chief Melchiori. He writes asking that the board appoint Jaylene Ramirez to the position of part-time dispatcher effective May 8, 2019 at a salary of $18.73 per hour. Ms. Ramirez is currently an advisor with the Orange County Sheriff's Officer Office Explorer Post 5110 and has undergone the required department background investigation, physical, and drug screening. I put that in the form of a motion. I'll second. Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Thank you and welcome aboard. <laughs> okay, next order of business, uh, resignation, Emily Whitman from the Monroe Joint Park and Recreation Committee, Commission. Trustee Berenger. Okay. Um, okay, so the board, um, we, regret uh, the resignation of Emily Whitman from the Monroe Joint Park and Recreation Commission effective immediately. Um, we express our appreciation of Ms. Whitman's dedication to the commission since her joining in 2016 and wish her and her family well in their move from Monroe. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Thank you. Emily, you okay. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. First and second. Okay. Yeah. Call a question. First, who we'll called? No, Debbie put it in the form of a motion. Mm -hmm. Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Emily, Ms. Whitman will be very missed from Monroe. Right. Next order of business and appointment, uh, John Gilstrap on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Resolve the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of Mayor Dwyer and appoint John Gilstrap of 332 North Main Street in Monroe, New York to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fill a vacancy that will be created, um, actually, let me, let me take that back, that's not correct, um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals as a alternate. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Kilstrap will fill uh, two uh, empty seats as it stands right now on the alternates, am I correct? Howard, yeah? No, no, I mean to say the alternates. You, you have two alternates. There's, there's nobody sitting. In, you have two openings in the alternates position, right? So we have two openings. Exactly. John so John will fill one. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So uh, I need to put that, uh, I'd like to put that in the form I'll of a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second? I'll second. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Welcome aboard, Mr. Gilstrap. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Uh, next appointment of part-time code enforcement officer, Frank Pace. Resolved that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of Mayor Dwyer and appoint Frank Pace of 46 Mooseman Road, uh, Yorktown, New York, to the part-time position of code enforcement officer effective immediately. Mr. Pace will work a minimum of 10 hours per week at an hourly wage of $20 per hour. Mr. P uh, Pace will focus specifically on property maintenance, fire inspections, and rental inspections. I put that in the form of a motion. I'll second. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. And just so we're clear, I, uh, one part I uh, didn't mention, the appointment is contingent upon a pre-approval from Orange County uh, Civil Service, which we should hopefully have tomorrow. Um, 
next to our business event application, Quasco Centennial Fishing Derby Trustee Hool. Yes. Um, the Quasqua Centennial Committee, sponsored by Action in Monroe, has submitted an event application to host a fishing derby in Crane Park on Saturday, May 18th, 2019, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, the application has been reviewed and approved by the building department, the DPW, the police department. There were no additional costs uh, associated for police protection as Beeline officers will monitor the event for any potential traffic-related issues. I put that in the form of a motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Next order: event application, 2019 Village of Monroe Farmers Market. Trustee Hull. The Board of Trustees is being asked to approve the events application submitted by. Me, Dory Hall, trustee for the Village of Monroe for the annual Village of Monroe's Farmers Market. The market will begin on Sunday, June 2nd, 2019 and conclude on Sunday, November 17th, 2019. It will be open on Sundays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and will be located in the commuter lot on Nopon Parkway. The application has been reviewed and approved by the building department, the DPW, the police department. There are no additional costs for additional police protection or DPW services. The police department will close off the commuter lot every Saturday evening and reopen the commuter lot every Sunday after the event ends. B and C line officers will monitor the event for any potential traffic issues. Marshall and Sterling Insurance, Monroe Fire District, and Monroe Volunteer Ambulance Corp will be notified of the event when the approval letter is sent. I put that in the form of a motion. Thank you. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Uh, event application, Quasco Centennial Community Art Sale. Trustee Hull. The Quasco Centennial Committee, sponsored by the Village of Monroe, submitted an event application to host a community yard sale in the commuter parking lot on Nopon Parkway on Saturday, June 1st, 2019, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Set up for the event will begin at 8 a.m. The application has been reviewed and approved by the building department, the DPW, and the police department. The estimated cost of additional police services is $568 and includes one officer on eight hours of overtime at $71 per hour to assist with setup prior to the event. Pedestrian crossings on Nopon Parkway during the event and breakdown after the event. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. I second. Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Thank you. Next event application, 2019 Village of Monroe Summer Concert Series. Uh, Mayor Dwyer has submitted an event application for the 2019 Summer Concert Series featuring five concerts to be held in the, uh, at the north side of Lake Street between the Mill Ponds on the following dates, June 29, July 13, July 27, August 10th, and August 17th. Concerts begin at 7 p.m. and end at approximately 8.30 p.m. In the case of rain, will be held the following day, Sunday, beginning at 7 p.m. The application has been reviewed and approved by the Building Department, the DPW, and Police Department. The estimated cost of additional police service is $1,065 for all five events and includes one officer on three hours of overtime at $71 per hour per concert to close down Lake Street between 17 and Mill Pond Parkway as well as to assist with traffic control points. Therefore, resolved the Board of Trustees approve the event application supported, submitted by Do uh, Mayor Dwyer for the 2019 Summer Concert Series featuring the five concerts to be held on the north side of Lake Street. I put that in the form of a motion. I second. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Request for waiver for planning board fees from the Monroe Free Library. A letter was received uh, by the Board of Trustees from Patricia Shanley, the President of the Board of Trustees for the Monroe Free Library. She submitted a letter requesting a waiver of the planning board fees in the amount of $925 that were associated with the construction of a deck off the rear part of their library. The deck is to be used for the outdoor programs and concerts, which will be an asset to the community. The Monroe Free Library is requesting the waiver because the library is a nonprofit organization which is funded by the taxpayers. I need a motion that we uh, accept this request and offer a waiver to the Monroe Free Library. I'll make that motion. 
Do you need a second? Okay. Call the question. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Next uh, order of business is uh, the unpaid charges levied to the fiscal year 2020 tax roll for the village of Monroe. Resolve per the requirement of Orange County Real Property Tax Service, the preparer of the June village tax bills, the Board of Trustees authorized the village clerk to fo forward the following amounts to be levied to the fiscal year 2020 June village tax. Amounts to be raised by taxes, $7,169,844. Unpaid water charges, $209,475.05. And property maintenance charges, uh, i.e. grass and lawn violations, $2,006.63. Uh, the property maintenance charges listed above pertain to the following properties. 235-218, uh, 235 235-120, 209-146, 205-426, 205-4-126, 212-2-2, and 206-5-7. Uh, I need to put that in the form of a motion. I'll put that, okay. You're making that motion? Yes. Okay. I'll second. Call the question. Aye. 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 Aye, so carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Um, I'm just going to go out of order, D and H. Uh, H refers to an IMA, an intermunicipal agreement, that the village would like to enter into with the town of Blooming Grove. Uh, all the trustees have been given a, a proposed uh, intermunicipal agreement to review, and I thought tonight would be a good time to start the conversation. I've asked council to uh, take a look at it, and she'll be doing that. But I just wanted to get into it, uh, and if there's any questions the trustees had of me right up front, I can possibly answer. Um, I'd be happy to do that. The IMA basically is for the purposes of um, working cooperatively with the, the Town of Blooming Grove for certain services that they have expertise in, uh, i.e. Uh, tree cutting. So the Town of Blooming Grove has the ability to come in with licensed arborists and tree cutters and a, and a certified truck with a bucket, they can go up and, and, and take care of our trees that are in danger of collapsing, falling, you know, or, or, or a public hazard. And that's a tremendous asset for this village. Um, so um, the opportunity came about. I had a conversation with the supervisor, Rob Drolleman, over there, and he's offered that very comprehensively uh, and extended further services as he needed them. So that's very much appreciated by me and I'm sure by the trustees and this board. So uh, we're going to allow council to have an opportunity to go through it and to see if there's any concerns there for us. And I think by next meeting, I think we'll be able to enter into this agreement, council. Right. Definitely. Uh, and we've already benefited. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Whenever you can share services, we're going to remain supportive. Absolutely. <laughs> so, all right. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, enough said on that. Yeah, next piece is I've asked the chief to come tonight, uh, Chief Melchiori, to discuss uh, a village safety assessment that the board has uh, recognized uh, we need. And uh, Chief, would you mind coming up and speaking to the audience and to the public about the initiative <laughs> and what we hope to achieve? Yes, we want to address the uh, facilities within the Village of Monroe. One is the Village Hall itself. We want to do a threat safety assessment at this location. Our water treatment plant, our inlets, a pump house, gatehouse, we want to address those issues. And again, down at the uh, Village Highway Department. Sure. 
involving chemicals or uh, equipment and safety and uh, security. And as you said, these are going to involve cameras and uh, alarms, cameras, physical assessments, uh, property. We already started approaching some grant process right. for some equipment and see if there's any funding for. Uh, I don't think we're going to get funding for the village hall or the highway department, but I think we can get some for the uh, for the Mombasha. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and uh, Sergeant Krause will take the lead on that to Good. get as much assistance from the outside as possible. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. And to that end, uh, with regard to the water, uh, there definitely seems to be more opportunity there for uh, grant opportunities. Uh, the board wrote uh, recently for two grants uh, that we actually tagged on with the town, and um, hopefully they'll come through for us. Uh, both are on assessment of vulnerability at the lake uh, that I feel is really important uh, that we need to control. Uh, and to uh, restrict the environment or access to it. Um, so I think going forward, as the chief said, we're going to be able to uh, do very well, I think, with the, uh, with the lake side of things. Irregardless, uh, the village safety assessment, uh, Sergeant Krause and, and the chief are going to move forward with, and it'll make us uh, a better place to work uh, And uh, once he's done his assessment. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I don't really have anything. Anybody else? Trustees? Hey, um, I was going to say, uh, Fern Street, I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think it, looked, it looked great. Uh, a few of us worked together, well, we worked together to uh, clean up over by, um, between Joe Fix It, the old Joe Fix It's, and um, like that little triangle area. And we got a lot cleaned up, and I saw a lot of people around cleaning, and I'm hoping that. It's something that people will kind of take into consideration more than just on Earth Day. It just, it really looked like a park by the time we were right. done cleaning up and it was just nice to see people coming together and making our town and village look even prettier. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, the great job you guys did. It's very, very nice. I wanted to thank the Monroe Police Department for their help with the Arbor Day celebration on um, April 28th, that was at Smith Clove Park. Uh, Officer Mahoney and uh, Sergeant Guzman came down and they helped us dig some holes and plant some trees. We planted three seedlings to celebrate the village's Quasqua Centennial, the 125th anniversary. Uh, two of them have nice little buds on them. One looks like a Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> the poor thing, I hope it survives. Um, but we hope that it will grow into beautiful trees. And uh, both officers from the Monroe Police Department were wonderful with the kids who were there, helping them plant stuff. Officer Mahoney almost got a face full of dirt from one little girl, but it was, it was a great day. And I also wanted to give kudos to Officer Dunn for his very extensive knowledge on um, truck inspections. I went to their field um, they did some field training on uh, Thursday of last week. And the amount of knowledge that this man has regarding truck inspections was impressive. What he was teaching these guys without having to refer back to a manual just off the top of his head, ap absolutely amazing, very impressed. Good job, Chief. Uh, Okay, public comment, please. Sir. <laughs> sure. Well, first, thank you for bringing the, uh, the, date, the dates together for the hydrant flushing in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Um, the DPW building, fire alarm. Does that have a fire alarm system in it? Uh, the garage? I believe it does. Whether or not it's active, I can't say honestly. I know the town of Chester just had a yep. serious uh, mishap up there. Uh, I was up there that night, and uh, you know I know the highway superintendent up there, and it's luckily, you know, it happened at eight o'clock at night. Right, nobody was there. The police department's right next door. Sure. So they walked out the door and saw the smoke, and they, they knew. They were actually in the building, the fire department, from what I understand. It was a Monday, and they were doing 
for uh, Joe in that truck with Vernal. Yeah, and we got on Joe also, so we don't want to fight that. But you know, and the timing as far as the season, yep, that would have been in the dead of winter, and you would have lost four or five of your primary plow trucks. I'm afraid of that, yeah. So if you don't have the fire alarm system hooked up down here. Make that a yeah, I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I called Greg Townsend uh, last week, and uh, I asked him to put a policy and let me know what what he can share on it because they have to come and do annual inspections. So I'm waiting for that feedback. That's about the last thing we want. Uh, absolutely, and we reached out to uh, uh, the superintendent up there and offered our services in any way he needed. It's devastating. And the last thing I don't know. Um, you and I met yesterday regarding the, the towns looking to do this conservative cluster residential sure. zoning. Yep. Um, it's within 1,500 or 1,600 feet of village boundaries. Um, I, I have some concerns over what they're proposing. I, didn't, I was not able to attend the meeting last night. Um, you know, traffic for one. Uh, we just, we gotta do something. Freeland Street, Spring Street, North Main Street, it's, it used to just be gridlock, it seemed like on Friday nights. Yeah. Now it's every single day. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I get a fire call and I'm home, I'm better off just walking down to the firehouse because I'll get there faster. Sure. But um, you know, there's just some concerns with what they're looking to do and why they want to do it along the, the village boundaries. If, if, if that's the case, why not allow the properties to be annexed into the village? So, um, so I know you said you were going to go up last night. I did. So I went up last night. Uh, I didn't speak publicly. Uh, I let the public do their thing and whatnot. And then uh, a lot of what you and I spoke about was addressed. Uh, one thing that they did offer to do, uh, which was the correct thing to do in my opinion, they kept the public hearing open and they're going to continue to do so. They expect at least two more public meetings. So that's a good, good thing, I think. And then the second piece is that um, – I asked them to do maybe a PowerPoint, something more comprehensive, you know, because one of the things I noticed last night amongst the public is there was a anxious or anxiety sense, of, you know, a sense of anxiety in the room. But I think as the um, councilman uh, McGinn started to put the narrative out there, I think it's it, it came down a bit. Uh, Jim Rogers spoke; he was the first speaker, and um, he just said, I, "I needed more information," like you had said. We just kind of got this and what's happening, you know. And so Mike went into about a 15-minute narrative, and I think it helped a lot uh, in the expo explanations. And then uh, Supervisor Cardone followed. And then um, after that, uh, I think somebody else, Brian Newsom spoke. Um, so they, I, they agreed to keep everything open. Uh, they're, they're interested in hearing from everybody. Um, and I think their next meeting, uh, they've encouraged a lot of people to show up and, and get into public discussion. I just said, listen, I, I need more information. My residents want to know more about what you're thinking about along our periphery. And he, they agreed. And, uh, and I think they're going to do that. They're going to try to still keep the conversation moving. Yeah. Against the town. Yep. But they can't even get it right up here on Grover Street. Yeah. You have buildings that are being constructed that were not approved, you know, that run the plans, they're just building and threatening litigation. Yep. And that's right here. That's that's less than 1,600 feet. Right. It's staring us in the face. Yep. Um, history seems to repeat itself. The town, many years ago, when Meadow Glen off of Daly Farm Road was constructed, I was involved in a lot of that uh, with water contracts and the like, and there was supposed to be workforce housing in there, and there was supposed to be moderate income housing in there. Well, the almighty dollar talk, the town took the money, it took $1 million, and let uh, Kay Hubnanian, who built that project, do away with what they promised the, the people here in the community. Yeah, went back to market rate housing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so just, you know, just keep that in mind. No, absolutely. I mean, traffic, we got, you know, somewhere, somehow, the, the town and the two villages got to get together to figure out how we're going to move traffic around this this um, yeah. in this whole town, the two Absolutely. villages and the town. And with what's going on across from the trooper barracks, that's only going to add to it. Right. Um, it's something that, that, that needs to get addressed because it, it's more and more frustrating every day sitting in traffic and you can't move around here. 
You're correct, John. And, and just today we had a meeting uh, with uh, our traffic consultants about that very thing. And so there's a whole new narrative starting up. Yeah, so uh, is that, is, I don't even, is the Southeast Orange Traffic Task Force still in play? I haven't heard from them or anything since, it's been a while. Orange uh, County. Back, we were, we were aggressively pushing to do the Larkin Drive extension, which ran parallel with 17. Right up to 208. Right on to 208. Right. And eliminate most of that Blooming Grove traffic and stuff that's got to snake its way up North Main Street. Sure, and, and through the village. Uh, you know, they've constructed buildings over there on what was supposed to be the footprint for that road. So anything, if it does happen, it's going to be eminent domain. It's going to cost the taxpayer a fortune. Right. But s somebody's got to start addressing, you know, the, the traffic. It, it, it's got to start there because if you can't move around. Absolutely. That's a sensibility. Agreed. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, John. Please, come on up. We won't be able to hear you on the tape if you don't. Just pitch it down. The tape won't pick up your voice without you speaking to it. Just tip it down. There you go. Or you can hold it in your hand if you like. Okay. Vertically, you mean. I met with vertically. Yeah, I met with um, Sybil. Your name is? Uh, for the Sharon record. Shear. Yep. I'm an um, environmental advocate for the area. Sure. People know me. Some people know me. Some people don't. But I, um, I actually flew to Africa, and I did work with donkeys trying to rescue them. So if I would fly 22 at hours to Africa, I mean, my local life here matters. Sure. It really does. So I met with Scothis, and I was trying to, right now I'm looking into getting a, uh, a clear-cut uh, tree bill put uh, to legislation, which would mean that the endangered species that are in the area and um, the environmental study for palm tree and KJ, there is, there's, the environmental studies are scary. You have it, a long-eared endangered bat. You have your uh, Indiana bat. One is critically endangered. This is the long-eared, this is the long-eared uh, bat. This is the palm tree environmental study that there was supposed oh. to be uh, a real study with bat sonar done. That means ground sonar to make sure that they weren't going to, when they did their clear cutting, so like I'm backing up John on this, when they did the clear cutting, there's nothing I can do to fix that. It's done. At the end of the day, this is what we have. We have now Forest Road got clear cutted because in the fall, apparently, there was complaints about bats. At the end of the day, bats are good. So what I want to do is say, bats come to the village because that's where they're coming next. When you take their habitat away, they travel within 20 to 30 miles from the caves. The females go into the caves in the winter in November to come out in the spring. I spoke to a biologist. I, I've actually spoke to uh, bat biologists. And so at the end of the day, this is what they look like. This is an Indiana bat. They're so small and adorable that you would not even believe it. I think that if you could put an alert out that the bats are going to be coming to town and that there's something called a three-chambered bat box that anybody can put instead of those things outside their homes that go bzz, 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 bzz. There's a natural way. Down at the O&R Park, I have four bat boxes. There's no bugs there. You would Wh think. Where is this? You have this? The O&R Park. Oh. Down here where the swans are. Sure. You're not going to believe this. There's no bugs there. Mm -hmm. Really? You know why there's no bugs there? The bats there's four bat them. boxes. Mm -hmm. The bats are there. So when we, you know, people just don't think anymore about the nature and sure. about how important it is. And the fact is, the bats are going to come here. Now, the bad news is, I think you should put an alert out on the, if you have a, a flyer or constant contact. Sorry? We have constant contact. I would definitely put an alert out that bats in the spring right now are going to be coming flying out. They go tree to tree. Their normal roosting area was Dunderberg Road, then Forest Road, as of Passover, just got cut completely down. So I can't put that back. And that's why I'm meeting with Scofus and my lo local legislators right now. Because at the end of the day, I can't put the trees back. The environmental study was ignored. This is palm trees in, in environmental studies. You look at what I said, what they put. Yes, there's bats present. But then it's missing the part where they're endangered. One's critically endangered. So we also have rattlesnakes that are very rare. And we also have pitch pine trees that are very rare. In the environmental study, all you need to do is go on the Monroe site, go under documents, go to page 40, 
on the um, palm tree and then page 12 on the other one. There's like a KJ environmental study and there's also a, a palm tree environmental study. Just skip right ahead to the environmental area because it's very interesting. So at the end of the day, I'm only here to give you a warning that if you take the mosquitoes, that's what they eat. If you take the mosquitoes, at the end of the day, you, you think the measles outbreak is bad now? We are gonna have the West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm telling you today is a warning. I'm warning you that if measles could come to this village and not only be one of the highest percentages of measles in the state between this area and New York City, why is that? I don't know, but I'm telling you this much. At the end of the day, you take all the bats out, the natural predators against mosquitoes, one female mosquito will eat a thousand mosquitoes, one female bat will eat a thousand mosquitoes per day. You take them out, now you've got mosquitoes all over. They have standing water there. They have standing water in Forest Road and they also have another little lake. So now you have two lakes up there that are gonna attract mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are gonna be there. West Nile virus is, is, is just very serious. It's not something you want us to get next. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that bat boxes, three chambered bat boxes will welcome these bats to our area. Bring them here, you know. Anywhere you put the bat boxes, the bats will use. Three chambered facing southeast because in the morning it heats it up, then at night it stays warm inside. Sharon, have you reached out to the officials at KJ? I have not. That might be a good idea. I mean, you're I went trying to, to Scopus. I didn't know what to do. Oh. I, I would try know, there. I'm in hot water with the Monroe Town Board, as you may have all heard. So I figured I would not go there. So <laughs> I would try Kyrie Straw, the officials there. Um, I figured I'd come to you and, and ask you to please invite the bats. I mean, I like them. I think but they're But if they're mad. already in KJ, they should probably stay there. No, they're, they're going to – their trees are gone. There's but more trees. We'll just so put they're here. Boxes they there. are here, right? If they, that's the thing. If we okay. could get them to put bat boxes there rather than cut the trees down, this is what I was talking about. Somebody's got to be educational to go over there, and I am not always the best with negotiating, as you may have heard. So I really do the best that I can. <laughs> So I'm not the person you want to send over there to do the negotiating. <laughs> I'm just saying you need some bat boxes, lots of them. Okay, that's okay, it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Okay. Having said that, uh, I need a motion to go into executive for, uh, session for the purposes of personnel and pending litigation. Second. Call the question. Aye. <coughs> so, Carrie, thank you all for coming, and good luck. Thank you very I much. appreciate your service very much. Thank you.